Greetings and welcome, welcome back to another fragrance review on my channel and today we're gonna talk about another fragrance from the House of Creed. Today we're talking about their fragrance Royal Oud. So I already made a review of Creed Aventus, if you're interested in that video, link is in the description down below. But today we're talking about, in my opinion, their best uh, fragrance, at least in the men's lineup. So let's take a quick look at the packaging first and then we'll talk about the notes, uh, how the fragrance smells, etc. So the actual packaging of the fragrance, it comes in a black, uh, sorry, not black, white cardboard box with this texturing on it. In the front we have the Creed logo, the crown of the House of Creed, and it says Creed Royal Oud from Father to Son since 1760. And we get the size 100 ml, so this is a 100 ml bottle and 3.3 fluid ounces. On the sides we don't really have anything and in the back we have a description of this fragrance as well as the signature of Olivia Creed. On the bottom of the box we get the batch code as well as the ingredients for the fragrance and at the top we have the names of the alleged aristocracy members that Creed made fragrances for, however none of this has ever been really proven. Uh, when we open the box we have two pieces of paper which I think is a uh, cool little addition to the uh, unboxing experience. On the first piece of paper we get the pictures of James Creed and Olivier Creed as well as a short description of how they make their fragrances and on the second piece of paper we get the alleged history of the House of Creed. Again, none of this has ever been proven. And finally we get to the bottle of the fragrance. It's of course a glass bottle. Uh, it's completely see-through with the Creed uh, letters being raised above the bottle. They're painted black and there's a sticker that says Royal Oud. It's in this beautiful piano black color with some gold accents with the gold leathers. And we also get the size of the bottle again on the sticker. On the size on the back we don't have anything. At the bottom of the bottle we get Paris, made in France, Creed Paris. And again the batch coat. On the top is the black Creed plastic uh, cap with the golden Creed crown at the top. It's a click on cap, however it holds pretty well so you could hold this uh, bottle on the cap, it should not fall off. And the sprayer is golden and uh, as every Creed sprayer it has a pretty good amount of uh, fragrance per spray. So overall I really like the packaging of this bottle, I like the, of this fragrance, I really like the look of this bottle, I think it's very classy. Uh, some people say the Creed fragrances tend to look a little cheap, uh, I disagree, I really really like their designs. So now let's talk about the actual notes of the fragrance or the note breakdown. So, in the top notes, the notes listed are pink pepper, lemon and bergamot. In the mid notes we have cedarwood, angelica and galbanum. And in the base notes we have uh, sandalwood, musk and of course oud. Uh, you would expect oud to be listed in a fragrance called royal oud. Uh, now longevity and projection on my skin are fantastic. So it's easy 8 hours plus on my skin. With the projection being pretty good in the first 2 hours. So in the first 2 hours it's around a meter and a half of projection. After that it starts to settle down and become more of a skin scent. And of course it has a great scent trail or great sillage. Now some people claim that this fragrance only lasts like half an hour on their skin, while other people claim this lasts like 10 hours on their skin. Again, I'm luckily in the second category, so please, before buying this fragrance, test it out, make sure you have good longevity with this fragrance, because if it only lasts an hour on your skin, it's not really worth a buy if you agree. Uh, seasons when I wear this fragrance, this is definitely a cold season fragrance. So this uh, is best worn in the autumn and winter months, maybe in the cold spring uh, months because of the fresh opening, but please don't wear this in the summer. Uh, people are really not gonna like you if you wear this in the hot summer days or even hot summer nights. Uh, seasons, uh, we already discussed, now let's talk about the occasions and age range. If we're generalizing, the age range when I would suggest you to wear this fragrance is for somebody uh, who has finished university, who is becoming a young professional, so around 23 or 24 years of age plus. Why? Well, because this fragrance smells very classy, very elegant, so it's not something you should wear in high school if we agree. Um, I would wear this fragrance for occasions like in the office setting, when you have important meetings with clients and want to leave a good first impression, or even on a job interview, because again, you can leave a very good first impression, but just wear one spray on the interview, please don't wear more than that, because it's gonna be a bit too strong. But yeah, like I said, very classy. That's why for the special or formal, sorry, occasions. Uh, and that's it for the overall, um, uh, overall general information about the fragrance. Now let's talk about how this fragrance actually smells. 
well, at least to my nose. I think this fragrance is very, very well made, very well blended, uh, and you can easily pick up most of the notes listed in the notes breakdown. So like I said, the opening is very fresh, and it's fresh from the citrus notes of bergamot and lemon, uh, with a slight, slight, slight harshness from the pink pepper notes in the opening. Now, while the opening is very fresh and very pleasant, uh, the magic happens when the mid notes and the bass notes come into play. So in the mid notes we have the note of cedarwood, and cedarwood is the main note of this fragrance. So once you start to smell it, it lasts until the actual evaporation of this fragrance from your skin. Uh, some people call this fragrance royal cedar, and I tend to agree with them. I think it's a lot more appropriate than royal oud. So cedar is definitely front and center, the main note you can smell in the fragrance when you come to the mid notes, with the Albanum and angelica notes um, giving it a slight herbal background a slight herbal support to the lovely woody cedarwood smell now in addition to the cedarwood when you get to the base notes you get the beautiful creamy sandalwood so it's very woody very creamy smelling fragrance it's so beautiful with the musk notes also present however there is no oud at least in my opinion, for my nose, I really can't pick up any oud in this fragrance. Uh, I looked it up online and I'm not the only one who feels this way. A lot of people claim they can't really smell oud or even if they can, that it's a very faint, very weak smelling oud. It's not definitely a fragrance made for somebody who is, for example, from the Middle East where oud is a lot more appreciated. In fact, now, I would say this fragrance, because it was made in 2011 uh, by Olivia Creed, apparently, uh, or allegedly. Um, so, I would say this fragrance was made during the uh, oud craze in the early 2010s in the fragrance community. And it's definitely been made for Western noses who are not very accustomed to harsh, strong oud smells. Because oud tends to smell a bit more animalic, a bit more medicinal, very strong smell. This fragrance does not smell like that. So, I think that's why they made it this way, the way that they did. Maybe oud is present but they made it so weak so unnoticeable because they wanted to sell this fragrance for as many Westerners as they possibly could and I think they succeeded I mean this is one of the best fragrances uh, in the house of Creed for men like I already said in the beginning it's my favorite Creed fragrance at least on the second spot would be Green Irish Tweed on the third Spice and Wood but this is my definite number one now even though I say this is number one Creed fragrance um, please uh, don't blind buy this fragrance or any fragrance in general because that's why I bought Aventus. I watched a lot of fragrance reviewers and they always said oh Aventus is the best, Aventus is number one. So I just went into the store, bought Aventus, never tried any other Creed fragrance or any other fragrance in general uh, and I think that was a big mistake and I don't think you should make the same mistake especially because we are talking about these fragrances which tend to be a bit more expensive. Now I don't know maybe uh, you would prefer Viking or Himalaya or Grenadier Street or maybe even Aventus but for me uh, Royal Oud is definitely number one. Uh, overall, would I recommend you buying this fragrance? Yes, however, try to find it for a cheaper price. Uh, the retail price is crazy for Creed, especially in the US. I bought this bottle for 170 euros, which is 170 dollars because dollar and euro now one to one. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think 170 dollars for this fragrance is more than appropriate. Um, maybe go up to $200, anything above that, for 100 ml of course, anything above that is I think a bit too much, you're asking a bit too much for this fragrance, it's not worth over $200. Uh, but yeah, overall I love this fragrance, I really do. Uh, and if you like this video uh, please leave a thumbs up, if you dislike the video leave a thumbs down and maybe give me some suggestions on how I can improve my content. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more fragrance or wrist related videos and until next time guys have a great day and 